Let's talk to James Gortry. He's a technology specialist at Schroders. I'm wondering whether you've got your finger on the pulse and what you might actually expect from this new iPhone 5 or whatever actually they call it. Sure. Well, I think we can expect more of the same from Apple, really. Um, absolutely class-leading products. Um, difficult to say exactly what will be in there, but we can probably expect something a little bit thinner. We can expect something a little bit faster. Um, and probably what this device, what this launch is really all about is the software. Um, iOS 5 is their new operating system, which is coming onto that. And that's probably what's going to really differentiate this product. And what about Apple's strategy? What about the existing models? Might they come down in price, for instance? Yeah, sure. We've seen that. I mean, Apple will need to be careful that it doesn't cannibalize sales of the, the new iPhone 5. Um, I mean, I'm sort of saying that with a, with a careful caveat. We don't know it's going to be the iPhone 5 for sure yet, yeah. but they need to be very careful they don't cannibalize the new sales. So we might see a, a slightly um, a sort of down spec of a past version and a cheaper model yet. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was not going to ask you about the cheaper model because yeah. a lot of people, industry watchers, have been expecting that for quite a while. What do you think has taken them so long? Is it because they know that they can sell virtually every iPhone out there at a premium? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, it, you know, in my opinion, uh, when I say a cheaper model, I should be careful we're talking about a marginally cheaper yeah. model here because Apple only really plays in the very premium end of the market. Uh, you know, we're talking in the sort of smartphones that cost $500 plus. That's a market that Apple created on itself and it's very, very careful not to go and start playing in the kind of $100, $200 phones. Competition is very, very high down there. There you start getting into a scrap with the likes of Samsung and HTC, perhaps even Nokia one day. Um, and, and that's not what it really wants to do. It doesn't need to do it yet. There's still a long, long way to go um, for that premium end of the market. Talking of scraps, what about these patent wars, notably the one with Samsung? Where are we on these patent wars? It, it, there are so many flying around yeah. at the moment. It's difficult to know exactly just where we are, where Apple stands, where Samsung stands, where HTC stands. Yeah, it is very difficult to know. Um, uh, you know, as outsiders, I don't feel we have a particularly great insight into this, into this area. Um, but what I can tell you is that, you know, in the past, uh, a lot of these IP patent wars have been a real feature of technology and you know trips that I've had out to Asia talking to a lot of the guys out there they feel that this perhaps isn't anything bigger than, than past IP battles we've seen in the industry so you know the likes of Qualcomm that we saw in the in past years I, I think the difference is with Apple and Samsung they're such consumer facing brand that perhaps it's taking on a little more attention than, than otherwise would have done. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, just humor me a little bit because, yep. you know, this is the smartphone market. I just want to know what's absolutely special about this, which is prompting so many legal disputes. Because let's face it, a TV is a TV, a fridge is a fridge. Yeah. I and think a it's, phone is a phone. It's, I mean, it's basically because the market is sort of, um, you know, it, it's well defined, but we haven't got a complete runaway winner yet. We know that we've got, uh, uh, you know, Google with Android on one side of the fence and we have Apple with iOS on the other side. And these two are really battling it out. And, and that's what these patent wars are all about. You know, both are doing fabulously well, but both would love to absolutely dominate this market. And the, the patent wars as well are very country specific, aren't they? And that's even adding to the confusion mix. Yeah, I think that's more probably a process of the legal system that we're just seeing them picked up country by country, the Netherlands, Australia, for example. But I don't think that's sort of, you know, it, it'll be a global phenomenon. Uh, Tim Cook, I guess, finally gets his chance to make his mark on this yeah. launch later today. How important is that for him? Are you expecting Steve Jobs to play any sort of part? Are they really now? That was then. This is his time now. I think Apple really needs to sort of get the message across that this is Tim Cook's time. You know, Steve Jobs has been um, inspirational, you know, probably the biggest CEO in the world over the last 10 years. But Tim Cook really needs to sit down now, stamp his mark on Apple, and I think that's what investors will be looking for going forward. We shall see what happens. James Gortry from Schroeder Investment Management. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much Thank indeed. You.